Welcome back to another episode of D&D 20, and without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Our adventures are summoned by Archdruid Uthrandir, and as he confirms, they were not followed into the wood. He does request us, though, to take care of a problem that they have. Dr ogres have entered their wood and have been causing problems for the high elves and the druids alike. And so in payment of healing Edmund, they request us to take care of their ogre problem. The party agrees as they do owe the druids a favor. And because Edmund is still recovering from his wounds, it is still going to take a couple days before they are able to ride out to uh, ride back to Brenziri. The group sets off and Siler notices the quiet of the woods, the abundance of animals in it. And as he notices the abundance of animals, the group is attacked by a pair of owlbears. After the fight, Tyleaf is able to find that they had stumbled across the owlbear's territory and their nest. Inside the nest, three little baby owlbears are found. Tyleaf, with the help of a uh, casting handle animal, are able to get the babies to follow them. Owlbears are known for guarding their territory well and, if trained, are able to become superior guardians. The druids will pay for them handsomely. As the party progresses, they notice wind, or what they think is wind. As the day continues, the, this wind turns into whispers. Sai, the only one passing his perception roll, is still only able to make out two distinct words, world stone and ice. As night falls, the party comes and sets up camp, setting up a watch. Tylee first his watch is beckoned by the whispers more st stronger, strongly this time. The orb calls to him from a size backpack but he does nothing about it and so his pass will, his watch passes groggily both Mokot and Dodo wake up to take their take the second watch Dodo cannot resist the urge it wells up in him and Mokot seeing something wrong does the only thing he can and charms Dodo which breaks him out of his trance Sai and Lorvir, taking up the last watch, hear the whispers as well. Though failing their will saves, they cannot resist. And as Sai takes the orb out of his backpack, handing it to Lorvir, both of them touch the orb. And in that instant, they both receive visions. Sai's vision, different from the last, shows his army now turned into an armada sailing north into the desolate wastelands. They land or ground the boats onto a glacier at the base of a great crystalline form hanging all over the world. The cannons open fire and as the last shot is fired it breaks the form and white light radiates, and so his vision ends. Lorivir's vision, on the other hand, is her on top of a mountain of gold, a throne of molten gold, no fine craftsmanship, just solid gold. Servants and slaves are strewn at her feet, and her companions, Tyleaf, Mokot, Dodo, Siler, are all in chains. All the guards are grotesquely fat and people who have spoken against her are tortured, frail, and sick. The world that she rules is 
rotten and is dying, and the life tree where her throne stands is decaying. Their visions end and Lorvir burst into tears. Sai demands what Lorvir has told Edmund about this orb, and she replies, telling him that, telling Sai that she has told him nothing, and they both agree to not share the visions with anyone else. Tyleaf, waking up early to go hunting, begs Siler to come with. And he talks about the whispers of the orbs speaking to him. As the party reconvenes, they head out after the ogre trail. After the fight with the ogres, they are able to interrogate one of them. The ogre talks about his family, his group, following a green man, and that the, those batch of orcs, four of them in total, thought it foolish. They think the green man weak and so they separated from their family. After finding no more use for him, Siler takes his sword and slits the ogre's throat. The party heads back to the druids and as night falls they set up camp again. With the same watch. As Tyleaf and his wolf stand guard, he hears the whispers again and the urge to seek the orb. Tyleaf does nothing but finds himself looking at the bag over and over and over again. Mokot and Dodo, failing their will saves, both have an unnatural want to see this orb. And as they try to make their way to Sai's backpack, he wakes up. Noticing something strange in their behavior, Mokot and Dodo try to persuade Siler to open his bag and show them the orb, for them to just touch it. Siler, sensing something is deeply wrong, draws his swords. Noticing that Tyleaf is awake in this commotion, begs him his aid. Tyleaf stands there neutral, letting the scene play out before him. Lorivir wakes up, and as the exchanges go of persuasion and deceit, Sai drops his swords and gives in, only to tell Mokot and Dodo that he will show them the orb and that will be done with it. As Sai reaches into his pack and brings out the orb, he is again assaulted by visions. This time, it is earlier in his crusade. He stands before the tomb of his father, his ancestors, on elven land. A crown is on his head and he stands before the high elves, rallying them and calling them to action calling them to war. He then sees himself taking his army of elves down into the Redlands and laying siege to Brenziri. The vision ends with him in one-on-one -on -one combat with the king and slaying him. Sai drops the ore back in his bag. And there is a big dispute of tension. Tyleaf questions whether Sai should be carrying this orb by himself. Mokot and Dodo wanting more of the orb to share the load. The settle the issue is settled by Sai and Lorivir convincing the others that this orb is evil and that the less 
they have to do with it, the better. The party agrees that the orb should not be touched, and if one is prompted to, the rest will stop you by any means necessary. The party reach the Elder Grove safely the next day. Ty Leaf hands over the Alvers to the Druids and is rewarded by a suit of dragon hide scale mail. He has also a helmet. Somehow we viewed the, our little gnome compatriot to look something like this. Edmund now being at full health is making preparations to Brenziri. Lorevir meets with him. Uh, he tries to ask what we found in the ruins, and Lord, to which Lorevir answers that we found an orb, a magical orb. He asked for it, for that was his mission, to bring it back whatever item we found to Brenziri. Lorvir tries to distract him, giving him a kiss. To no avail, he still asks for it, and he insists that it was his mission that he must fulfill. Seeing that Lorevir was trapped and Edmund not willing to let this go, Siler takes the orb and drops it into a pouch. He tells Edmund what he needs to know. The orb is evil and he must not, under any condition, touch it on his way to Brenziri. He warns Edmund that he is to give this to Yanis, the Archmage of Brenziri. Tyleef Meanwhile, reports back to the arch druid and sees that he is in conversation with a high elf. He is told after his report that the high elf wishes to speak with one of the party members. What does this high elf want? Who is he? You guys will just have to stay tuned to the next episode of D&D 20.